father's family name being Philip, and my Christian name, Philip, my infant tongue could make of both names nothing longer or more explicit than Pip. So I called myself Pip, and came to be called Pip. Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut your throat. No, sir, no. Tell us your name. Quick. Pip. Pip, sir. sir. <clears throat> Show us where you live. Point out the place. There, sir. There. Your mother. There, sir. No, sir. There, sir. Also Georgiana. That's my mother. Ah. And is that your father along or your mother? Yes, sir. Him too. Late of this parish. Ah. Then who do you live with? Supposing you're kindly let to live, which I ain't made up my mind about yet. With my sister, sir. Mrs. Joe Gardry. Wife of Joe Gardry the blacksmith. Blacksmith, eh? Now, look at here. Do you know what a file is? Yes, sir. Do you know what whittles is? Yes, sir. Food, sir. Then you get me a file and you get me whittles or I'll have your heart and liver out. If you'll kindly let me keep upright, sir, perhaps I shouldn't be sick and perhaps I could attend more. Now, you bring that file and them whittles to me in this churchyard tomorrow morning early. Yes, sir. And never dare to say a word of having seen such a person as me. No, sir. If you do, your heart and liver will be tore out and roasted and et. There's a young man hid with me, and in comparison with him, I'm an angel. And that young man has a secret way of getting at a boy and at his liver. The boy may lock his door, may be warm in bed, but that young man will softly creep his way to him and tear him yes. open. Say, heaven strike you dead if you don't. Heaven strike me dead if I don't. Now you know what you promised, young man. Get off home. Good night, sir. Joe? Mrs. Joe's been out a dozen times looking for you, Pip. She's out again now, making it a baker's dozen. She? And what's worse, she's got Tickler with her, Pip. She got up, she made a grab at Tickler, and she rampaged out, Pip. She oh, rampaged I out. I want to get in a she's a coming. Get behind the door, old chap, and get the towel betwixt you. You young. Where have you been? 
I've only been to the churchyard. Churchyard, indeed. You'd have been in the churchyard long ago if it hadn't been for me and stayed there. It's bad enough being a blacksmith's wife without having to be a second mother to you. Churchyard, indeed. You'll be having me in the churchyard one of these days, keeping me on the rampage with my poor heart. Get to the table. Both of you. Joe? Yes, there's another convict off. What does that mean? Oh, escaped, escaped. There was one escaped last night. They fired a warning of him. This must be a second one. Where does the firing come from? Drat the boy, ask no questions, you'll be told no lies. Mrs. Joe, I should like to know, if you wouldn't much mind, where the firing comes from. Bless the boy from the hulks, of course. Oh, hulks. Uh, and please, what's Hulks? There you go. That's the way with this boy. Answer him one question and he'll ask you a dozen. Hulks are prison ships right across the marshes. I wonder who's put in prison ships and why they're put in there. People are put into prison ships because they murder and because they forge and rob and do all sorts of bad things. And they always start by asking too many questions. Now go on with your supper. Get off to bed. close over his head, but that young man will softly creep his way to him and tear him open. <laughs> Wake up, Mrs. Joe. Wake up. You're a thief, Bip. With somebody else's brandy. With somebody else's pile. With somebody else's pork pie. Stop him! Hello, young thief. Uh, I couldn't help it, sir. <laughs> Sir? You brought no one with you? No, sir. 
Now give no one the word to follow you. No, sir. What's in the bottle, boy? Brandy. I think you've got the ague, sir. <coughs> oh, I'm much of your opinion, boy. I'm glad you enjoy it. Hmm? I said I'm glad you enjoy it. Thank you, boy. I do. Aren't you going to leave any of it for him? Him? Who's him? The young man you spoke of. Oh, uh, him? <laughs> oh, he don't want no food. He, he looked as if he did. Looked? When? Just now. Where? Over there. <clears throat> did you notice anything about him? He had a big scar on his face. Not, not here. Yes, there. Give us hold of that file, boy. If you're not wanting me, sir, we have company for dinner, and my sister will be up early. Thank you, boy. Thank you. This boy ought to be truly grateful, ma'am, for the princely dinner you've set before him. Do you hear what Uncle Pumblechook says? Be grateful. Why is it the young are never grateful? Naturally vicious. Mm. Now, to finish with, I want you all to taste a delicious, delightful gift from Uncle Pumblechook. Mm. It's a pie. A savoury pork pie. A savoury pork, pork pie? Mm. Let's have a cut of this pie, Mrs. Doe, and we'll try to do it justice. <laughs> Clean plates. Cold. I always say a bit of savoury pork pie will lay atop of anything you may care to mention and do no harm. What's the matter, boy? Nothing, sir. I should think not. Enjoying yourself with your elders and betters? Improving yourself with their conversation? Now then, son, where do you think you're off to? Oh, um, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm on a chase in the name of the king. I want the blacksmith. And what might you want him for, pray? Mrs. Speaking for myself, I should reply, for the honour and pleasure of his fine wife's acquaintance. Speaking for the king, I answer, a little job done. You see, blacksmith, we've had an accident with these, and as they're wanted for immediate service, will you throw your eye over them? Convict, Sergeant. Aye, too. Have you seen anything of them? Heavens preserve us, no. We haven't seen them. No. Oh, no. Well, we'll find them. Don't forget that. He tried. He tried to murder me. 
Me tried to murder him. I kept him from getting off these marshes. I could have got clear. Then I discovered he was here. I let him go free to make a fool of me again. <laughs> let me go. Let me go. Make ready. Present. Fire! Hands. You're expected on board. Come on. Light those torches. Get aboard, you. I wish to say something respecting this escape. It may prevent some persons laying under suspicion along me. What is it? I took some food from the blacksmith near the village, over yonder. It was a dram of liquor and a pie. You happen to have missed such an article as a pie, blacksmith? Well, my wife did the very moment you came in. Oh, so you're the blacksmith, are you? Then I'm sorry to say I... I've eaten your pie. Oh, you're welcome to it as far as ever it were mine. We don't know what you've done, but we wouldn't have you starved to death for it, poor miserable fellow creature, would us, Pip? Give way, you. Cast off there. It was a year later. this day he never will be but it's only to be hoped he won't be pampered not by miss havisham ma'am she knows better do you know who miss havisham is yes who she's the strange lady in the large house but she's mad ain't she <laughs> she may be mad but she's rich enough to make the boy's fortune she wants him to go and play there and he'd better play there or else i'll work him well I wonder how she comes to know our pip Oh, Lord, I'm mussy me. Here I stand talking to me a moon calves and Uncle Pumblechute waiting and that boy grind with dirt from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Three. Punctual to the minute. Let it be a lesson to you. This is Pip. So this is Pip, is it? Come in, Pip. Oh, do you wish to see Miss Havisham? If Miss Havisham wishes to see me. Ah, but you see she doesn't. Come along, boy. Your 
your clock stop, miss. It should say a quarter past three. Don't loiter, boy. Come along, boy. Take your hat off. After you, miss. Don't be silly. I'm not going in. Chooks boy, come to play. Come nearer. Let me look at you. Come close. Look at me. You're not afraid of a woman who has never seen the sun since you were born? No. Do you know what I touch? Here? Your heart. Broken. I sometimes have sick fancies. And I have a fancy I should like to see someone play. 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 Estella, come here. Your own, one day, my dear. And you will use it well. Let me see you play cards with this boy. With this boy? But he is a common labouring boy. And look at his boots. Well, you can break his heart. What do you play, boy? Only begging my neighbour, miss. Begger him. Four for the east, one for a jack. He calls the knaves jacks, this boy. And what coarse hands he has. You stupid, clumsy, labouring boy. She says many hard things of you. But you say nothing of her. What do you think of her? I don't like to say. Tell me in my ear. I think she's very proud. Anything else? I think she's very pretty. Anything else? I think she's very insulting. Anything else? I think I should like to go home now. And never see her again, though she is so pretty. I'm not sure that I wouldn't like to see her again, but I think I'd like to go home now. You shall go home soon. Play the game out. Wait here, boy. Why didn't you cry? So I don't want to. You do. You've been crying and you're near crying now. Long after I'd gone to bed that night, I thought of Estella. 
and how common she would consider Joe a mere blacksmith. I thought how he and my sister were sitting in the kitchen, and how Miss Havisham and Estella never sat in a kitchen, but were far above the level of such common things. The following week, Today, boy. Well, I'm sure. What next? The idea. Well, well, Miss, am I pretty? Yes, I think you're very pretty. Am I insulting? N no, not so much so as you were last time. Not so much so? No. There, take that, you cross little monster. What do you think of me now? I shan't tell you. Because you're going to tell upstairs, is that it? No, it's not it. Why don't you cry again, you little wretch? I'll never cry for you again. In there, boy. So the days have worn away, have they? Yes, ma'am. Today is... There, there. I know nothing of days of the week, nothing of weeks of the year. Do you know what that is? There? I can't guess what it is, ma'am. It's a great cake. A bride cake. Mine. On this day of the year, long before you were born, this heap of decay was brought here. It and I have worn away together. Mice have gnawed at it. And sharper teeth than teeth of mice have gnawed at me. There, there. Walk me. Walk me, walk me. Dear Miss Havisham. Good morning, Miss Havisham. Good morning, Miss Havisham. How well you look. I do not look well, Sarah Pocket. I'm yellow skin and bone. Those pip are my relations. The Pockets. They are very particularly interested in my health. So once a year, on my birthday, I summon them to visit me. Many there. Pip, my dear, run into the garden and play. Estella will tell you when to come back. Yes, ma'am. Hello, young fellow. Hello. Who gave you leave to prowl about? Miss Estella. Come on, fight. Oh, stop a minute there. I ought to give you a reason for fighting, too. <clears throat> there it is. Come on. Are you satisfied with the ground? Quite satisfied, thank you. Good. That 
means you've won. Uh, can I help you? No, thank you. I'm quite all right. Good afternoon, then. Same to you. Boy! Boy! Yes, miss? You may kiss me if you like. Now you are to go home. Three months later, my sister became ill and was laid to rest in the churchyard on the marshes. The occasion was marked for me not so much by the passing of Mrs. Joe as by the arrival of Biddy. Very soon she became a trusted friend to both of us and a blessing to the household. Biddy, I want you to help me. Don't I help you, Pip? Oh, yes. You help me a lot with my letters and figures. But this is a secret. Oh? What is it? Biddy. Yes? Biddy, I want to be a gentleman. A gentleman? Oh, I wouldn't if I was you, Pip. I don't think it would answer. Biddy, I have a particular reason for wanting to be a gentleman. Well, you know best, Pip, but don't you think you're happy as you are? I'm not happy as I am. I'm coarse and common. Coarse and common, are you, Pip? Who said so? Beautiful young lady at Miss Havisham's. And I want to be a gentleman on her account. Whom have we here? A boy. A boy of the neighborhood, hey? Yes, sir. How do you come here? Miss Havisham sent for me, sir. Well, behave yourself. I have a pretty large experience of boys, and you're a bad lot of fellows. Now, mind you, behave yourself. Yes, sir. Take this in there, boy. Yes, miss. From this moment, I entered upon the regular occupation of pushing Miss Havisham in her chair. As we began to be more used to one another, Miss Havisham talked more to me and asked me such questions as what I'd learnt and what I was going to be. Estella was always there and always let me in and out, but never told me I might kiss her again. Sometimes she would coldly tolerate me, and other times she told me energetically, I hate you. My admiration of her knew no bounds and scarce a night went by without my falling asleep with the image of her pretty face before my eyes. One day... <laughs> Does she grow prettier and prettier, Pip? Yes, Miss Hamisham. There, there. That's all till next time. Miss Hamisham? I can't come next time. This is sad news, Pip. Why not? Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm 14. Oh, and you start your apprenticeship with a blacksmith, do you not? Yes, Miss Hamisham. Why so glum, Pip? Are you not excited by your new venture? I used to think I would be, but I'm not now. Pip, here are some golden sovereigns. A gift from me. Thank you, Miss Havisham. Do with them what you please. You've earned them well. Thank you. Come and see me on your next birthday. Yes, Miss Havisham. Estella, show him out. 
Goodbye, Miss Havisham. Goodbye, Pip. You'd better say goodbye to me, because I'm going away too. Going away? Yes. I'm going to France to be educated for a lady. To be educated for a lady? Yes. Well, aren't you sorry I'm going? Yes, Estella. I'm very sorry. I wish I knew when you were coming back. But I wish... What do you wish? I wish I could kiss you goodbye. My boyhood had ended, and my life as a blacksmith began. It was in the sixth year of my apprenticeship, and it was a Friday night. Are you the blacksmith by name Joseph or Joe Gargery? Yes, sir. Have you an apprentice commonly known as Pip? Is he here? I'm Pip, sir. Oh. So you are Pip? Yes, sir. My name is Jaggers. I'm a lawyer in London. I wish to have a private conference with you two. We better go into the house. Now, Joseph Gargery. I am the bearer of an offer to relieve you of this young fellow, your apprentice. You would not object to cancel his apprenticeship for his own good, his own request? You would want nothing for so doing? Heaven forbid I should want anything for not standing in Pip's way. Very well, then. I come now to this young fellow. And my communication to him is that he has great expectations. I am instructed to communicate to him that he will come into a handsome property. Further, that it is the desire of the present possessor of that property that he shall be immediately removed from his present sphere of life and from this place and be brought up as befits a young gentleman of great expectations. Now, Mr. Pip, you are to understand first that it is the request of the person from whom I take my instructions that you always bear the name of Pip. If you have any objection, now is the time to mention it. I, I, uh, I have no objection. I should think not indeed. Secondly, Mr. Pip, you are to understand that the name of the person who is your liberal benefactor is to remain a profound secret until that person chooses to reveal it. If you have any suspicion whom that person might be, keep that suspicion within your own breast. If you have any objection, now is the time to mention it. Speak out. I have, have no objection. And now, Mr. Pip, kindly consider me your guardian. I have, uh, th thank you, sir. Oh, I tell you at once, I'm well paid for my services, otherwise I shouldn't render them. I have arranged for you to go to London in a week's time. You will need some new clothes. They should not be working clothes. Twenty guineas. Well, Joseph Gargery, you look dumbfounded. I am. Hmm. Then good night, Mr. Gargery. Good night, Pip. Good night, sir. Pip, a young gentleman of great expectations. Biddy! I start for London tomorrow, Miss Havisham, and I thought you would kindly not mind my taking leave of you. Well? I've come into such good fortune since I saw you last, Miss Havisham, and I'm, I'm so grateful for it. I've seen Mr. Jaggers, Pip. I've heard about it. So you go tomorrow? 
Yes, Miss Havisham. And you are adopted by a rich person. Not named. <laughs> no, Miss Havisham. And Mr. Jaggers is made your guardian. Yes, Miss Havisham. Is uh, Abroad. Mr. Prettier than ever. And admired by all who see her. And you too have a promising career before you. Be good and deserve it, Pip. Yes. You will always keep the name of Pip, you know. Yes, Miss Havisham. Goodbye, Pip. Excuse me, please. Is Mr. Jaggers at home? He is not. He's in court at present. Am I addressing Mr. Pip? Yes, I'm Mr. Pip. Mr. Jaggers left word, would you wait in his room? Come this way, please. I couldn't say how long he might be, but it stands to reason his time being valuable, he won't be longer than he can help. Go and wait outside, Mike. All right. Hope I'm not interrupting. Oh, certainly not. Oi! Your first time in London, Mr. Pip? Uh, yes, sir. I was new here once. Rum to think of it now. Whose likeness is that? That? Oh, this is our most famous client. Got us a world of credit. This chap murdered his master. Didn't plan it badly. Is it like him? Like him? It is him, you know. This cast was made in Newgate, directly after he was taken down. Oh, your man comes on this afternoon. Have you got the witness? Yes, Mr. Jaggers. Wait here. Mr. Pip's here. Good. Ah, so you've arrived safely, Mr. Pip. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Jaggers. Now, we can soon settle you. Wemmick, Mr. Pip's file. Wemmick here will conduct you to a Mr. Herbert Pocket's rooms in Barnard's Inn, where you will live. Oh, sit down, Mr. Pip, sit down. Mr. Pocket will be able to give you a good lead as to the places in London with which you shall become acquainted. I take it that that is agreeable? Yes, Mr. Jaggers. Ah, next, money. Your allowance will be £250 per annum. 
which means that you will draw from Wemmick here the sum of 62 pounds 10 shillings per quarter. A very handsome sum of money too, I think. You consider it so? How could I do otherwise? Ah, but answer the question. Undoubtedly, Mr. Jaggers. Good. Get out! Now, here is a list of the tradespeople with whom you may run up an account. Wemmick, take Mr. Pip round to Barnard's Inn. Yes, sir. I should check the bills and pull you up if I find you getting on too well. Of course, you'll go wrong somehow, yes, Mr. but that's no fault of mine. Goodbye and good luck, Mr. Good Pip. Mr. Mike! Mr. Wemmick, I don't quite know what to make of Mr. Jaggers. Oh, we don't mean that you should know what to make of him. Deep, that's what he is, as Australia. Who was that he shouted at so fiercely in the office? Oh, that was his housekeeper, name of Molly. He got her off on a murder charge. Murder? Isn't he frightened of having her about? Not him. When you come to see us again, take a good look at her. Shall I see anything very uncommon? You'll see a wild beast tamed. Keep your eye on it. Here we are. Mr. Pocket on the first floor. You don't want me anymore? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Wemmick. As I keep the cash, we shall most likely meet pretty often. Oh, well, he's very glad, I'm sure, to make your acquaintance. Good day. Good day, sir. Dear me, I'm extremely sorry, but the fact is I've been out on your account, for I thought coming from the country you might like a little fruit, and I went to Covent Garden Market to get it good. Well, thank you. It's very nice of you. Can I take the parcels? It sticks, you know. Pray come in. Now, this is the sitting room. Rather musty, but Barnard's is musty. I'm afraid I'm rather bare here. Now, that's my little bedroom, and this is your room. Come in. Oh, it's very nice. The furniture specially hired for the occasion. Oh, I hope that... Oh, dear me, I beg your pardon. You're holding the fruit all this time. I feel quite ashamed. You'll be very quiet here, and we shall be alone together. But I dare say we shan't fight. Fight? Fight? I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. You're the pale young gentleman from Miss Havisham's. Bless me, and you are the prowling boy. The idea of it's being you. For well, the idea of it's being you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've forgiven me for having knocked you about so. Oh, of course. <laughs> you hadn't come into your good fortune at that time, had you? Uh, no. I was rather on the lookout for a good fortune then. Indeed. If Miss Havisham had taken a liking to me, I suppose I should have been provided for. But perhaps even I should have been engaged to Estella. <laughs> but I didn't care much for it. She's a tartar. Who? Miss Havisham? I don't say no to that, but I meant Estella. You know she was adopted and brought up by Miss Havisham to wreak revenge on all the male sex. Wreak revenge on all the male sex? Um, what revenge? Heavens, Mr. Pip, I thought you knew. Uh, no. Dear me, it's quite a story and should be saved till dinner time. Shall I take your stick? Oh, thank you. A and your hat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Herbert. Yes, my dear Pip. As I've been brought up a blacksmith, I take it as a great kindness if you'd give me a hint when I go wrong in my manners. With pleasure, though. I should guess you'd need very few hints. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, please tell me more of Miss Havisham. Ah, yes, Miss Havisham. But let me introduce the topic by pointing out that in London it's not the custom to put the knife in the mouth, <laughs> for fear of accidents. It's scarcely worth mentioning, or it's as well to do as other people do. <laughs> I must apologize. Thank you. Not Thank at you all, much. I'm sure. <laughs> now, Miss Havisham was an heiress and, as you may well suppose, was looked upon as a great match. Well, one day there appeared upon the scene a certain man. Uh, I never saw him, for this was 25 years ago. He pursued her closely and professed to be devoted to her, and there's no doubt that she fell passionately in love with him, which brings me to the cruel part of the story. M merely breaking off to remark, my dear Pip, that it's not usually considered necessary to fill the mouth to its utmost capacity. Oh, oh, I was so interested. <laughs> not at all, I'm sure. <laughs> 
The marriage day was arranged. The wedding dresses were bought. The wedding guests were invited. The day came, but not the bridegroom. He wrote a letter. Which she received when she was dressing for her marriage at 20 minutes to nine. Exactly. So that was why she stopped the clocks. Yes. And when she'd recovered from a bad illness, she laid the whole place waste, as you've seen it, and has never since looked upon the light of day. Herbert, you said that Estella was not related to Miss Havisham, but only adopted. When adopted? There's always been an Estella since I've heard of a Miss Havisham. I know no more. So, Pip, all I know of Miss Havisham, you know. Well, let's change to brighter prospects. Let's drink to London. And a very happy future. To London. And a very happy future. <laughs> That's right. That's better. Much better. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Give me, Herbert. <laughs> carry on, Pip, carry on. And so, um, if I could um, buy some new furniture and perhaps uh, one or two other little things, I think I could be quite at home at Barnard's Inn. Do it. I knew you'd get on. How much do you want? 20 pounds. Webbick! I should say you were at home. Herbert. Yes? We've done very badly. Very badly. Thank heaven for my birthday. Good morning, Mr. Pitt. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Good Pitt. Morning. Congratulations, Mr. Pitt. Thank you, Mr. Wemmick. Come in. Mr. Pip, sir. Mm, come in. 21, eh, Pip? I must call you Mr. Pip today. Congratulations, Mr. Pip. Thank you, Mr. Jaggers. Sit down. I'm going to have a word with you. If you please, sir. What do you suppose you are living at the rate of? At the rate of, Mr. Jaggers? The rate of. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'm unable to answer. I thought so. Now, I've asked you a question, my friend. Have you anything to ask me? Oh, well, uh, of course, it would be a great relief to ask you several questions, Mr. Jaggers, if it were not forbidden. Ask one. Uh, is my benefactor to be made known to me today? No. Ask another. Uh, well, I... I was just, um, wondering if, if I had anything to receive. <laughs> I thought we should come to that. Wemmick! Mr. Pip, you have been spending pretty freely of late, and you're in debt, of course. I'm afraid I must say yes, sir. You know you must say yes, don't you? Yes, sir. Wemmick, hand Mr. Pip that piece of paper. Now, unfold it and tell me what it is. This is a banknote for 500 pounds. That is a banknote for 500 pounds. And at the rate of that handsome sum of money per annum, and at no higher rate, you are to live until your benefactor appears. Will it, um, will it still be years hence, Mr. Jaggers? When that person discloses, you and that person will settle your own affairs. My part of the business will cease. 
That's all I have to say. Wemmick, show Mr. Pip out. Thank you, Mr. Jaggers. My dear Mr. Pip, Mr. Gargery is going to London and would be glad if you are agreeable to be allowed to see you. He will call Tuesday morning at nine o'clock. We talk of you in the kitchen every night and wonder what you are saying and doing. No more, dear Mr. Pip, from your ever obliged and affectionate servant, Biddy. As I watched Joe that Tuesday morning, dressed grotesquely in a new suit, let me confess that if I could have kept him away by paying money, I certainly would have paid money. In trying to become a gentleman, I had succeeded in becoming a snob. Joe, how are you, Joe? Pip, how are you, Pip? Come in, Joe. Well, Joe, I am glad to see you. Pip, dear old chap, you growed and you swelled and you gentle folk has to be sure you're an honor to your king and country. And you, Joe, look wonderfully well. Give me your hat. Uh, oh, Herbert, this is Mr. Joe Gargery. Joe and Mr. Herbert Pocket. How do you do, Mr. Gargery? Your servant, sir. W won't you sit down? Thank you kindly, sir. Will you take tea or coffee, Mr. Gargery? Uh, oh, thank you kindly, sir. I'll take whichever is most agreeable to yourself. Well, what you say to coffee? Thank you kindly, sir. Since you are so good as to make choice of coffee, I'll not run contrary to your opinions. But don't you find that rather heating? Well, say tea, then. <laughs> If Mr. Gargery will excuse me, I will go down to the porter's lodge to fetch the morning's letters. Thank, Thank you, you kindly, sir. Us two being now alone, sir. Joe, how can you call me sir? Us two being now alone, Pip, I will mention what have led to me having the present honour. Miss Havisham have recently sent for me. Miss Havisham, Joe? Would you tell Mr. Pip, she said, that I wish to see him at once? or I have something most particular to disclose to him. I see. Well, I have now concluded, sir, and, and, and Pip, I wish you ever well and ever prospering to a greater and greater height. I... But uh, you're not going now, Joe. Yes, I am. Well, you'll be coming back to dinner. Oh, no, Pip, old chap. You and me is not two figures to be together in London. I'm wrong in these clothes, Pip. I'm wrong out of the forge and out of the kitchen off the marshes. But, Joe... You I... won't find half so much fault with me if you think of me as Joe the blacksmith. And so... God bless you, dear old Pip, old chap. God bless you. All that day, Joe's simple dignity filled me with reproach. And next morning, I began the journey to our town, knowing that I should sleep that night at the forge. But as the miles went by, I became less convinced of this and invented reasons and excuses for not doing so. Joe, Pip's here. Oh, we didn't expect you, Pip. Pip, your bed's not ready. We thought for certain you'd be staying in the town. You must stay in the town. Gentlemen, always stay at the Blue Boar. Blue Boar Rochester! All other swindlers upon earth are nothing to the self-swindlers. And with such pretenses did I cheat myself. 
surely a curious thing. Come in, Pip. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do, Miss Havisham? You kiss my hand as if I were a queen. Well? I thought that you were so kind as to wish to see me, Miss Havisham. Well? Estella. <laughs> well, Pip? Stella, this is a, an unexpected pleasure. I, I didn't think to find you here. You two must have a lot to say to each other. Go out into the garden, both of you, and walk and talk together. I must have been a strange little creature to hide and watch you fight that day. But I did, and I enjoyed it very much. You rewarded me very much. Did I? Don't you remember? I remember I entertained a great objection to your opponent. <laughs> I took it ill that he should be brought here to pester me with his company. He and I are great friends now. Are you? I imagine that since your change of fortune, you have naturally changed your companions. Oh, yes, naturally. Yes. Do you remember the first time I came here? The time you made me cry? Did I? I don't remember. Not remember you made me cry? You meant nothing to me. Why should I remember? You must know, Pip, I have no heart. Perhaps that's why I have no memory. No one looking at you could believe that. Oh, I have a heart to be stabbed at or shot at, but you know what I mean. There's no sympathy there, no softness, no sentiment. If we're to be thrown much together, you had better believe that at once. I can't believe it, Estella. Very well. It's said at any rate. But remember how I've been brought up and don't expect too much of me. Come, Pip. You shall not shed tears for my cruelty today. We'll go just once more round the garden and then go in. Miss Havisham will be expecting you at your old post. Is she beautiful? Graceful, well-grown. Do you admire her, Pip? Everyone must who sees her, Miss Havisham. She is going to London soon, and you shall meet her there. I shall be the happiest man in London, Miss Havisham. Love her. If she favours you, love her. If she tears your heart to pieces, love her. I adopted her to be loved. I developed her into... As punctual as ever, Jaggers. As punctual as ever. How do you do, Pip? And what are you doing here? Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Havisham wished me to see Estella, Mr. Jaggers. Ah, a fine young lady. Shall I give you a ride, Miss Havisham? Once round? A very fine young lady, Pip. How nice to see you, Estella. My lesson from Miss Havisham is this. There are two Richmonds, one in Surrey and one in Yorkshire. Mine is the Surrey Richmond. The distance is ten miles. I am to have a carriage and you are to take me there. Here is my purse. No, no. No, you must take it. We are not free to follow our own devices, you and I. The carriage is ordered for half an hour from now and tea is ordered to while away that half hour. Does that please my lady? The tea will please her greatly. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to Richmond, Estella? I'm going to live, at a great expense, with a lady there who has the power, or says she has, of taking me about and introducing me and showing people to me and showing me to people. You'll have a gay time and be much admired. You must look forward to that, Estella. It's part of Miss Havisham's plan for me, Pip. I shan't take any great pleasure in events which I don't shape, but I shall be beautiful and I shall be gay, I shall be obedient, and I shall write regularly of my gaiety. Will you always be part of Miss Havisham's plan, Estella? And do you thrive with Mr. Pocket, Pip? Yes, indeed. We've, uh, we've left Barnard's Inn and moved to the Temple. Oh? I, I live quite pleasantly there. At least... At least? As pleasantly as I could anywhere. Away from you. All through that summer, I saw a great deal of Estella, and I was very happy. Until I realized, somewhat uncomfortably, that she had many admirers. It was not until the winter that fate threw her in the way of Bentley Drummond.
tired, Estella. Rather, Pip. You should be. Say rather, I should not be. But I still have my letter to Miss Havisham to write before I go to bed. Recounting tonight's tramp? Surely a very poor one, Estella. I don't know what you mean. I didn't know there'd been any. My lords, ladies and gentlemen. This is our dance, Estella. Pray take your places for the next dance. Look at Drummle. He never takes his eyes off you. Why should I look at him? Is there anything in Drummle I need to look at? That's what I want to ask you. He's been hovering about you for weeks. Moths and all sorts of ugly creatures hover about a lighted candle. Can the candle help it? My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray take your partners for the Spanish polka. <laughs> Makes me wretched to see you encourage him. Does it? You give him looks and smiles such as you never give to me. Do you want me then to deceive and entrap you? Do you deceive and entrap him, Estella? Yes, and many others. All of them but you. Mr. Pip. What's your business? My, my business? Ah, yes, I'll, uh, I'll explain my business by your leave. Do you, uh, do you wish to come in? Yes, I wish to come in, Master. Now, perhaps you will explain your visit. It's disappointing to a man after, after having looked forward so distant and come so far. Oh, but you're not to blame for that. What do you mean? I'll speak in half a minute. Give me half a minute, please. No one I, is there? Why do you ask that question? <laughs> uh, you're a gayman. I'm glad you growed up a gayman. Now I know who you are. The churchyard. The churchyard on the marshes. You're the convict I gave the food to. You acted nobly, my boy. Noble Pip, and I've never forgot it. If, if you're grateful to me for what I did when I was a child and, uh, and you've come to thank me for it, there's, there's, there's no need. <sighs> However, since you've uh, found me out, will, will you drink something before you go? Yes, I, I will drink, I thank you. 
before I go. <laughs> I, uh, I hope you won't think that I spoke harshly to you just now. I had no intention of doing it, and I'm very sorry for it if I did. I wish you well and happy. How, um, how have you been living? I've been a sheep farmer, away in the New World, in New South Wales. I hope you've done well. I've done wonderful well. I'm famous for it. I'm very glad to hear it. I hope to hear you say so, dear boy. But uh, you've done well too, eh? <laughs> yes, I've, I've done quite well. May I make so bold as to ask how you've done well since you and me was out in those lone, shivering marshes? How? Oh. Yes, I've, uh, I've been chosen to succeed to some property. What a mere varmint to ask what property? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> what a mere varmint to ask whose property? I don't know. Could I make a guess, I wonder, at your income since you come of age? As to the first figure now. Five? Concerning a guardian. There ought to be no guardian or such like when you were a minor. Some lawyer, maybe. As to the first letter of that lawyer's name now. Would it be J, as the employer of that lawyer whose name began with J and might be Jaggers? I wrote from Portsmouth to a person in London for particulars of your address. That person's name? Why, Wemmick. Yes, Pip, dear boy, I made a gentleman of you. It was me who had done it. I swore that time that as sure as I earned a guinea, that guinea would go to you. And that there hunted dog which you kept life in got his head so high that he made a gentleman. And Pip, you're him. Why, I'm your second father, Pip, and you're my son. And how good looking you've grown. Ah, uh, there's a pair of bright eyes somewhere, eh? Isn't there a pair of bright eyes what you love the thoughts of? It shall be your dear boy, if money can buy him. But didn't you never think it might be me? No, never. Well, you see, it was me. And single-handed. Never a soul in it but me own self and Mr. Jaggers. Was there no one else? No, oh, who else should there be? Well, where are you going to put me, dear boy? Uh, put? Oh, to sleep. I, uh... Who's that? Don't be alarmed. It's, it's Mr. Pocket who shares these rooms with me. Phew! What a night! Hello. Uh, Herbert, uh, something, uh, something very strange has happened. This is uh, a visitor of mine. Take it in your right hand. Say, strike me dead in the spot if I split in any way, whatever. Strike me dead on the spot if I split in any way, whatever. Kiss it. Do as he says, Herbert. No, you're an oath. Come in. Huh. You can go now, Molly. Now, Pip, be careful. I will, sir. Don't commit yourself. Don't commit anyone. You understand me? Anyone. Mr. Jaggers, don't I don't... tell me anything. I don't want to know anything. I'm not curious. I merely want to assure myself that what I've been told is true. Did you say told or informed? Told would seem to imply verbal communication. You can't have verbal communication with a man in New South Wales, you know. I will say informed, sir. Good. I've been informed by a person named Abel Magwitch that he is the benefactor so long unknown to me. That is the man in New South Wales. And only he. And only he. I'm not so unreasonable, sir, as to hold you at all responsible for my mistakes and wrong conclusions. 
but I always supposed that it was Miss Havisham. As you say, Pip, I am not at all responsible for that. Yet it looks so like it, sir. Not a particle of evidence, Pip. Take nothing on its looks, take everything on evidence. There is no better rule. Well, I have nothing more to say. I think you should know that I communicated with Abel Magwitch in New South Wales and reminded him that if ever he should present himself in this country, it would be an act of felony, rendering himself liable to the extreme penalty of the law. Take a look out of that window, Pip. every day. Magwitch has enemies here who would not hesitate to inform on him. I see. But he has guided himself by my caution, no doubt. No doubt, if you'll excuse me, sir. There's no other alternative. He must be got out of the country, and I shall have to go with him. Why must you go with him? He's risked everything on my account. I can do no less than stand by him now. What will you say to Estella? I'm at a loss to know what to say to her. She'd never understand about him. But I must see her before I go. <laughs> Just come down? Yes. Beastly place, your part of the country, I think. I'm going out for a ride in the saddle. I mean to explore those marshes for amusement. Out of the way villages there, they tell me. Curious little public houses and smithies and that. Mr. Drummer, I didn't seek this conversation. I don't find it a very agreeable one. I'm sure you don't. But don't lose your temper. Haven't you lost enough without that? What do you mean? Look here, you, sir. The lady is joining me later. So take her horse round to her house in an hour's time. Very good, sir. And don't forget to tell the waiter I don't dine, because I'm going to dine with the lady. Aye, aye. Come in. What wind blows you here, Pip? I went to Richmond yesterday to speak to Estella, Miss Havisham. And finding that some wind had blown her here, I followed. What I have to say to Estella, I will say before you presently in a few moments. It will not surprise you. It will not displease you. I'm as unhappy as you could ever have meant me to be. I have found out who my patron is. It isn't a fortunate discovery. And is not likely ever to enrich me in reputation, station, fortune, anything. But there are reasons why I can say no more of that. It is not my secret, but another's. It is not your secret, but another's. Well? When you first caused me to be brought here, Miss Havisham, I suppose I really did come here as any other chance boy might have come, as a kind of servant, to gratify a want or a whim and to be paid for it. Aye, Pip, you did. And that Mr. Jaggers was... Mr. Jaggers had nothing to do with it. His being my lawyer and the lawyer of your patron was a coincidence. He holds the same relation towards numbers of people. But when I fell into the mistake that I've so long remained in, at least you led me on. Yes. I let you go on. Was that kind? Who am I? For heaven's sake, that I should be kind. Well, 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 what else? Estella, I should have said this sooner, but for my long mistake, which led me to believe that Miss Havisham meant us for one another. And I felt that I couldn't tell you of my real feelings while you were not free to choose for yourself. But now I have to go away. And I must say it before I go. I love you, Estella. I've loved you ever since I first saw you in this house. Pip, I tried to warn you not to love me. But you wouldn't be warned, for you thought I didn't mean it. Isn't it true that Bentley Drummle is in town here and pursuing you? Quite true. 
that you encourage him and ride out with him, and that he dines with you this very day? Quite true. How can you fling yourself at such a man? Should I rather fling myself at you, Pip, who would sense at once that I bring nothing to you? But you cannot love him, Estella. What have I always told you? Do you still think, in spite of it, that I don't mean what I say? Estella, you... you would never marry him. Why not tell you the truth? I am going to be married to him. Come, Pip. Don't be afraid of my being a blessing to him. I shall not be that. Here is my hand. Let us part on this. You'll get me out of your thoughts in a week. What have I done? What have I done? If you mean what have you done to me, Miss Havisham, let me answer. Estella has been part of my existence ever since I first came here, the rough, common boy whose heart she wounded even then. She has been the embodiment of every graceful fancy that my mind has ever known. To the last hour of my life, she cannot choose but remain part of my character. Part of the little good in me, part of the evil. But you may dismiss me from your mind and conscience. But Estella is a different case. And if you can ever undo any scrap of what you've done amiss, in keeping part of her right nature away from her, it will be better to do that than to bemoan the past through a hundred years. Late that evening, I left the room with the long table for the last time and started on my way back to London. Ah, oh, Mr. Pip, I believe. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Dick. I have a note for you, sir. The messenger who brought it said it's urgent. A cab off the stand bag. Yes, sir. Morning, Wimmy. What's the trouble? So you got my note then? Yes, I came straight here. Why, what have you done to your hands? Oh, it's nothing. I got them burned, Mr. Wimmick. I'm very anxious. Everything's I... taken care of, Mr. Pip. But pray come in. You don't object to an aged parent, I hope. Oh, no, no. I should be delighted. This is Mr. Pip, aged P. Oh. And I wish you could hear his name. Oh. Give him a nod, Mr. Pip. That's what he likes. <laughs> <laughs> you made acquaintance with my son at his office, I expect. Yes. <laughs> Not a word to him, if you please, like winking. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I hear that my son is a wonderful hand at his business, sir. 
<laughs> yes. You're as proud of me as Punch, ain't you, Aged P? There's a nod for you. There's another one for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, Mr. Pip and I have business to discuss. Oh. Yeah. Come and sit down. I want to offer an apology, for he isn't capable of many pleasures. Just tip him a nod now and then when he looks off his paper and he'll be as happy as a king. I have pleasure, Mr. Wemmick, and I'm sure that you'll appreciate that I'm most anxious to know what's happened. Of course. Now, I heard by chance yesterday morning that an old enemy of a certain convict, whose name we needn't mention, yes. had got wind of his being in England. So I went to the temple and found Mr. Herbert. And I told him that if he was aware of any such person, whose name we needn't mention, being about your chambers, that he'd better get him out of the way. I also heard that you had been watched. That I'd been watched? Yes. <laughs> and might be watched again. So he'd better get him out of the way while you were out of the way. I see. He would be greatly puzzled what to do. He was. But I, we, have now removed him to a house overlooking the river, down Limehouse Way. I should like to join them at once. If you take my advice, Mr. Pip, you'll wait till after dark. By which time, you see, we can have those hands attended to. Thank you, Mrs. Wimpole, and you can send up our supper, if you will. Very good, sir. How is he? All's well. I may be grubber, dear boy. All this was. Are you sure that you can rely on Wemmick's judgment and sources of information? Aye, Wemmick knows. He spoke to me of a particular enemy of yours. Do you know who that might be? Aye, that was the man you saw fighting with me on the marshes, the man with the scar. He turned informer on me then to save his own skin, and he'd do it again to see me hanged. But no sneaking rat like him's going to make me leave, my boy. Well, if you're worried about that, there's no need. I'm coming with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're a gaven. <laughs> what a <laughs> gaven my boys turned out to be, eh? <laughs> the following day, I sent Herbert to make some inquiries. He found that the packet boat for the continent left Gravesend Pier at high tide every Thursday. I set myself to hire a boat. It was soon done. I couldn't get rid of the notion of being watched, and how many undesigning persons I suspected of watching me, it would be hard to calculate. I began to go out as for training and practice, sometimes alone, sometimes with Herbert. We were out in all weathers and became, as was our intention, familiar figures on the river. My burns were still very painful. We made it a practice that Herbert should embark from the place nearest to the house where our convict was hidden. As the hours of the tide changed, we took to going further down river. There, on the marshes, we found a lone public house where we decided to stay on the night of our escape. And from a nearby boy, we timed the passing of the packet boat. We chose this spot carefully. It was just above the point where the steamer picked up the river pilot. The river pilot. Our river pilot. One day, Herbert bought two steamship tickets, and our plans were set.
tell me something. What, dear boy? What I did for you as a child was such a small thing. Why have you done so much for me? I had a child of my own once, Pip. A little girl who I loved and lost. What happened to her? I don't know. It's a dark part of my life, dear boy. Ain't worth telling. But when on those lone, shivering marshes, a boy was kind to a half-starved convict, that boy took the place of the child he had lost. Pull on your left. She comes. Escape convict there. That's the man in the stern. I call upon him to surrender and you to assist. <laughs> I'll never forgive myself for this. I'm all right, dear boy. I'm content to have seen my boy and to take my chance. Jaggers will help us. He'll get you off all right. 
prisoners at the bar, it is now my duty to pronounce the sentence demanded by the law. The sentence of this court is that you be taken hence to the place from whence you came, and from thence to the place of execution, <laughs> and that each of you there be hanged by the neck until you be dead, and may Almighty God have mercy on your souls. Are you absolutely certain there is nothing you can do to save him? Nothing. You realize, of course, that you no longer inherit his money. That will be claimed by the Crown. The money is no interest to me. If you had been a blood relation, it might have been different. You are not a blood relation, so it is not different. You mean, if he had a child, the money would go to the child? The money might go to the child. Mr. Jaggers, there was a child. So you think there was a child, do you? I know there was a child. And what's more, Mr. Jaggers, you know it. Sit down, Pip. I'm going to put a case to you, Pip, but I admit nothing. I understand. You admit nothing. Put the case that a woman is charged with murder. Put the case that this woman has a child whose father is a convict. I understand you perfectly. But that I make no admissions. But that you make no admissions. Now, Pip, put the case that this woman's legal advisor knows an eccentric and very rich lady who is anxious to adopt a little girl. Do you understand, Pip? I understand. But I can hardly believe. Ring that bell, Mr. Pip. Yes, sir? Basin. Yes, sir. If I'm in my right mind, and that woman is Estella's mother, this legal advisor you mention will have a lot to answer for. Now, Pip, put the case that this legal advisor has often seen children tried at the criminal bar. Put the case that he has known them to be habitually imprisoned, whipped, neglected, cast out, qualified in all ways for the hangman and growing up to be hanged. But the case that here was one pretty little child out of the heap that could be saved. Put that last case to yourself very carefully, Pip. I do, Mr. Jaggers. Did he do right? He did right. Good. Does Estella know? You mean, does the little girl know? Yes. No, she does not know. She must never be told. As to that, she has a claim to her father's property. The legal advisor must use his own judgment. Her father's condition is considerably worse. He has been moved to the prison infirmary. She wasn't coming. And yet, I knew somehow that you would. It's just the time. I waited at the gate so as not to lose a moment of it. God bless you. You've never deserted me. 
But what's best of all is you'll be more comfortable along with me since I was under a dark cloud and than when the sun shone. That's best of all. Are you in pain? I... I don't complain of none, dear boy. You never do complain. You better stay. I have something to tell you. Can you understand what I say? You had a child once whom you loved and lost. She lived and found powerful friends. She is living now. She is a lady and very beautiful. And I love her. Oh, Lord, be merciful to him. A sinner. Is it do? Which it are, old chap. How long, do? Which you mean to say, Pip, how long have your illness lasted? Yes, do. Well, it's the end of April, Pip. Tomorrow's the first of May. Dear, do. Have you been here all the time? Oh, pretty nigh, old chap. Joe, where am I? Your home. I brought you home, dear old Pip, old chap. Oh, Joe, you break my heart. Please don't be so good to me. Now, look here, old chap, here with the best of friends. You'll soon be well enough to go out again. And then... Oh, what larks! Billy, you have the best husband in the world. And Joe, you've the best wife in the world. Which I know, Pip, old chap, which I know. You'll be very happy. Which are our intention, Pip, old chap. And you'll have children. Which also are our intention, Pip, old chap. One day, Pip, you'll marry too. I don't think I shall, Biddy. Not now. Dear Pip, do you still fret for her? I think of her. But that poor dream, Biddy, has all gone by. All gone by. I knew as I said these words that I secretly intended to visit the old house that evening.
tumble to. Quite right. Come in, Pip. I know nothing of days of the week, nothing of weeks of the year. Don't loiter, boy. Stella, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Paris with your husband. I have no husband, Pip. Have you not heard? I've been ill, Stella. I've heard nothing. When Mr. Jaggers disclosed to Bentley Drummle my true parentage, he no longer wished to have me for a wife. Well, Pip, why don't you laugh? You've every right to. I've no wish to laugh, Estella. I'm truly sorry. You've no need to pity me. It has simplified my life. There's now no need to sell the house. It is mine and I shall live here. I shall like it here, Pip. Away from the world and all its complications. Stella. How long have you been here? I don't know. Estella, you must leave this house. It's a dead house. Nothing can live here. Leave it, Estella, I beg of you. What do you mean? This is the house where I grew up. It's, it's part of me. It's my home. It's Miss Havisham's home. But she's gone, Estella. Gone from this house, from you, from both of us. She is not gone. She is still here with me in this house in this very room. Then I defy her. I have come back, Miss Havisham. I have come back to let in the sunlight. and decay. I've never ceased to love you even when there seemed no hope for my love. You're part of my existence, part of myself. Estella, come with me out into the sunlight. Look at me. Pip, I'm afraid. Look at me. We belong to each other. Let's start again. Together. <laughs> 